Well, good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar, and today what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about a uh, certain set of forces uh, that we come up uh, in physiology. These are really important when it comes to um, the movement of uh, solutes and solvents in and out of uh, capillary networks. Um, in particular, this is important when considering the uh, function of the uh, fundamental of the unit of the uh, kidney known as the nephron. Um, and you have uh, fluid moving across capillary networks in the, uh, the Bowman's uh, capsule, and you have uh, absorption, reabsorption, excretion, filtration, and, and so on occurring. Um, but the set of forces I want to talk about today are, we collectively call them the Starling forces, and of course they're named after uh, Frank Starling, the physiologist who um, uh, really helped uh, describe um, a lot of different um, physiological um, concepts and helped us describe them um, quantitatively. Um, we won't really be doing anything quantitative per se, such as uh, formulas and calculating. This is going to be more um, just understanding the concept. But so with that in mind, let's just go ahead and write those up there. So uh, what we'll be talking about, we'll be talking about the Starling forces. All right. Uh, Starling's forces. And this is something that uh, can, can be kind of confusing. So hopefully, uh, at the end of this video, I've, I will have cleared it up. So the two, two uh, major forces that we come across, or what we call the Starling forces, are, are something known, is something known as the hydrostatic pressure. Okay, hydrostatic. All right, hydrostatic pressure. All right. Okay, and, and sometimes in physiology, if we're using a formula, you might see a P subscript H um, to uh, denote that we're talking about hydrostatic pressure. And then we have something called oncotic pressure. All right, oncotic pressure. And often in physiology, um, that will be denoted with um, a pi. Um, that pi will be used to denote um, oncotic pressure. Okay, so what what are these two pressures? What are we talking about here? What what, what do they mean? And and, and it can be kind of easy to, to get these confused. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to draw um, a cross section of a capillary. So we have a capillary here, okay, and I have blood um, flowing through that capillary, and then I have the interstitial tissue, interstitial space um, here. Um, and, and you know cells and whatnot. Um, so when we talk about hydrostatic pressure, as as a fluid is moving through this vessel, the, there, there's going to be some pressure that that fluid, that that blood in this case, is going to exert. Okay, against the side of the vessel. Okay, so that pressure by the fact that the, you know the fluid is there, it's 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 flowing. Um, and it's exerting some some sort of pressure against the wall, and you could even think of this um, in, in a more intuitive way. Think of it as as maybe a balloon. And, and here I am holding, you know, the balloon with my hand here, and inside of that balloon, there's a pressure that's being applied to the surface of the balloon. And, and if I were to, you know, maybe poke a little hole in that balloon, assuming that it was really small and the, the balloon didn't collapse and all that um, right away, but maybe just a tiny little hole, um, then what would happen what would be that that, that pressure inside um, exerting on the, the wall on the inside, that, that pressure, um, assuming that that pressure was greater than the pressure out here, um, which, which it, it should be, otherwise a balloon would not be inflated, it would be deflated. Um, uh, is going to cause um, the air, in this case, to move out of the balloon. Well, the same analogy is true when considering the hydrostatic pressure, the pressure of a fluid that the fluid exerts against the, 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 the wall, the capillary network, because the capillaries, of course, have these little pores in them. They have these little holes these little fenestrations, and they can get bigger, smaller, depending on what's known as the, the permeability. Um, 
so there is a pressure that that will drive fluid out of the capillaries and that is what hydrostatic pressure really is is it's the pressure inside of the the vessel that um, wants to push fluid out of the vessel um, so if you have higher um, a higher level or a higher amount of hydrostatic pressure in the vessel the then more fluid will want to be pushed out of the vessel if you have lower hydrostatic pressure less fluid will be pushed out and of course it's really the the difference um, in hydrostatic pressures because there there may be hydrostatic pressure here as well around the vessel in the interstitial space and if, if the pressure is higher in the vessel than outside of the vessel then then the difference in the two pressures really um, that will, will um, create a, a gradient or a, a driving pressure um, that will drive fluid out of the vessel um, that's hydrostatic pressure oncotic pressure is is a bit less intuitive but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a cross section of a capillary again and now what I'm going to do is we're, we're going to zoom in and we know that blood contains very very large macromolecules in it and these little macromolecules can include things uh, colloidal uh, substances like um, proteins tend to be uh, really the, the big um, macromolecules that we have in blood um, so these these tend to be proteins they can be other molecules but uh, proteins tend to be the most significant ones so um, proteins uh, the biggest one being albumin All right, albumin tends to be the the one that we often talk about that's in the blood well these proteins are um, uh, these the proteins by the fact that they're there actually uh, produce a type of pressure and if you remember back uh, to uh, basic physiology and you talked about um, the di difference between diffusion, okay, dot, 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 and you talked about that versus osmosis, all right, diffusion versus osmosis. We knew that diffusion is the movement of solute, right, so stuff dissolved in a solvent, so... Um, diffusion is a movement of solute from high solute concentrations to low solute concentrations. And then we have this osmosis, which is not the movement of solute so much. It, it is not the movement of solute. It's actually the movement of the solvent. And in physiology, the universal solvent is almost always water. So it's the movement of water from low solute concentrations to high solute concentrations. So in this picture here, I have this, this, this blood moving through the vessel. This blood, of course, it is exerting um, a hydrostatic pressure against the vessel wall. And, and some of that, the fluid in there, may be escaping into the interstitial space, okay? But Here's, here's, here's another uh, concept that we need to take into consideration, um, the concept of osmosis. Osmosis is the movement, so I have some water out here in the interstitial space, and, it, and the water, of course, is a, is a solvent, and um, the solvent wants to move from low solute to high solute concentrations. Well, let me ask you, um, these these proteins are very large and they tend to not want to leave the vessels they tend to stay um, within the the vascular space um, because they're so large they can't pass through the vessels and, and under normal uh, circumstances um, so if I have lots of solute in here because these 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 proteins are, are, are solute they are dissolved in water um, uh, in, in, in a certain uh, in a certain sense, um, well, that that means that there's pro there may be not always, but maybe there is a l lower concentration of protein, of albumin, what have you, out here in the interstitial space. So the question is, where do you think the water is going to want to go? Is it going to want to stay out here, or is it going to want to move by osmosis 
um, from out here where the, the, the um, solute concentration is low to back into the vessel where I have higher solute because the water wants to be near the solute. There is an osmotic, um, an osmotic gradient there. And that is what oncotic pressure is, is the pressure that wants to pull water back into the capillary network um, because those capillaries contain proteins. And we see, we see in patients that um, maybe it is a, a liver, uh, somebody with, with uh, liver failure, um, where their liver is, is incapable of manufacturing proteins, they may have a very um, low albumin level, okay? So maybe their albumin level is much lower, and that decreases the oncotic pressure inside of their capillaries, which means that um, if the oncotic pressure decreases but the hydrostatic pressure is still high or, or unchanged, that means that more water is going to leave, it will leave their, their vessels and go out into the interstitial space, um, but less water will be coming back in because there's less oncotic pressure to pull that water back in. And you can get something known as a third spacing where you have water that, that moves out into the interstitial space and you can get dehydration and swelling of, of tissues and whatnot. Um, this certainly is not limited to, to liver failure. It can happen in, in all, uh, there are many other um, problems that can cause this, 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 this uh, loss of fluid through, through loss of oncotic pressure. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, when it comes to things like the kidneys and, and capillary networks, um, it is a balancing act. It is a balance between the hydrostatic pressure of the fluid inside of the um, vessel um, and the oncotic pressure, the, the, the pressure that pulls fluid back in. So hydrostatic is kind of the pressure that pushes water out of the vessel. And oncotic pressure is the pressure that wants to pull that, that water back in. And it is the balance between these two um, that um, helps maintain um, the net uh, movement of fluid across the vessel. And of course, other things go into that. How how permeable are the vessels um, and, and you know how permeable are the vessels and how leaky are they um, also plays a big role in that as well but uh, hopefully that makes sense um, and hopefully you have a better uh, intuition for what we mean when we talk about starling forces uh, particularly hydrostatic and oncotic pressure and what the differences between those pressures are um, I know that my students um, the questions that they come up against uh, mainly ask, you know, what what pressure would um, want to cause fluid to to leave? Um, what pressure primarily drives fluid out of the vessels, and what pressure primarily drives fluid back in uh, to the capillaries? And of course, hydrostatic typically drives it out. Oncotic typically um, pulls it back in. Okay, guys, hopefully uh, that makes sense, and hopefully you found that uh, uh, helpful and somewhat intuitive. As always, thanks for hanging in there.